What's happening, everyone? Got a bit done, I would say. Um, got a lot of the standard gauge stuff. Uh, I got all the track pretty much laid on this side. There's a couple pieces, like right back in there, that I'm going to leave uh, until I actually get this portion done over here, um, which will have a connection going across, just so I can get the curve in the entrance. I don't want to build up and then find out that it's not going to be right. So just holding off on that, but got all the track into the engine shop. Just put that on a cork sheet so it lines up with the uh, the uh, cork here. So these, it's actually my old layout. I guess it was narrower. So I'll just recut new styrene and put between the tracks. That way it'll be flush up against the edge. Um, and then I still have to put, uh, there'll be another switch out here. I think I'm gonna have it go this way and then run along the back there. So I still have to do that, it's not a big deal. Um, and then I actually have an extra switch. So I may put that maybe on the other side or something, but uh, we'll see. So you can see going all the way down. It wraps around. And then comes out here. So I'm leaving this long. So when I do the uh, swing bridge, I can cut the uh, rail. So that was all one piece. Or I'm, I don't know, I may cut it in case I break it. But, um, but you can see the outside, which will be the main line, is all the uh, concrete tie. And that's all the Pico. And then the uh, interior stuff is all uh, microengineering. You can see a shot all the way down there. And I've been attaching the track and the roadbed with, uh, it's called Loctite Instagram. Or, sorry, Power Grab. So this stuff's great. Um, so you can pretty much put uh, a bead down and then use a, a spreader and then spread it out so it's nice and thin and then just lay the track right on it or the roadbed and it grabs instantly but it still allows you probably 10-15 minutes of setup before it really hardens up and then once it's once it's there it's rock solid and it's waterproof so um, I've used this on both my other layouts and never had an issue with the track popping or anything like that so it works pretty good so I'm just starting to bring some of my uh, engines and other stuff out because I actually have it running. I actually have my SP5 booster just uh, temporarily wired in right now. And you can see down here is the actual power supply. And then underneath, you can see how I did my wiring. Uh, just the uh, suitcase connectors. I've used these on my last layout and they've worked well. Never had any issue with uh, bad connections and that layout was together for seven, eight years. Never had an issue. Um, all the track has been soldered in place. There's a couple spots that I didn't solder. And I just left the connections open with a small little gap. That way, as it heats and cools in here, it'll allow the track to uh, uh, contract and uh, expand. Also did that with the uh, the outside rails too. I had I didn't have an issue on my standard gauge, but I did have an issue with my narrow gauge with the track wind the bow. So about every I don't know 10 15 feet, I'll put uh, the connectors with nothing in, and then I've got all my feeders about every six feet. Um, you can see them coming across here. And then it runs off a main bus and I'm just using a 16 gauge. Uh, it's actually a speaker wire. And this stuff right here. This is what I used on my last layout for all the buses and it works really well. Don't mind that. And then for my feeder wires, I'm using this. It's a, uh, 
don't know what gauge this is, but it, I bought a big box of this at a Home Depot and they use it for, it's like control wires or something. And it's just small stranded wire. I don't know if it'll focus on it or not, but, um, but this works really well and it was cheap. Like a whole box of that was only like 40 bucks. And I've been using this stuff, I don't know, for everything and for a long time. So, um, that's pretty much everything on the standard gauge. So I'm just going to keep going. Uh, and then eventually I'll start on my, uh, the bench work to make the loop for my narrow gauge, uh, the SN3. Um, I painted the Silver Vista, and it has all the, uh, I put the uh, Archer rivets onto the top. Uh, and then still have to paint the interior on this, and then uh, put all the seats and stuff, and then letter it up. So, and then all the glass just on the roof. And then I still have to get couplers, um, waiting to get screws. That's one thing that I need to buy some more of and actually a couple of boxes because I don't have any there. Uh, and then my the PBL caboose, it's all lettered up, painted. Um, so I'm still applying the decal solvent to uh, set the decals. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead and flat it. And then once I flat it, then I can go ahead and put all the windows in. And then the other thing is I went and bought um, all the stuff to make my own uh, uh, switches for the SN3 because SN3 switches are kind of not the easiest to get a hold of. So uh, if you buy another brand, you're going to have to make them DCC ready, which means you've got to cut, resolder, or a bunch of other stuff. And it's like, if you're going to do that, might as well uh, just make them and then make them DCC. So I actually got this whole thing on eBay, all this stuff here, plus a bunch of other stuff in there, uh, 225 bucks. And I don't think it's ever been used. There's no file marks on any of the points, uh, tools. Um, and it came with a rail bender. I don't really need a rail bender, but for the price, um, couldn't beat it. And then here's the jig. So these are pretty cool. If you've ever watched any of the videos, and here's some of the uh, the copper ties, and then here's one of the uh, the uh, pieces that go down below. So uh, with all this, I'll be able to start making uh, switches. Uh, I've watched all the videos, so hopefully I don't mess things up. Um, but I'll get that hopefully in the next maybe maybe tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. Um, depends on how I feel feel <laughs> like going down that road. Uh, and then I can actually use this rail and then put it on the, uh, the bridge there. And it actually came with spikes, uh, rail spikes and a, a rail spike plier and a whole bunch of ties. Um, uh, the SN3 gauge and it had these re-railers and a whole bunch of decals. Um, and I actually need some of the decals for the uh, CNS uh, box or the stock car that I'm uh, about to build. So um, once I get the rest of this stuff, I'll go ahead and paint the track. Um, I usually use, I think it's a roof brown, but uh, all the trains are running and they actually run pretty good. So here's uh, my Athern uh, SD60E.
so I don't have my uh, the USB hookup to this yet, uh, so I can't use the JMRI, uh, but I have the USB adapter. Oh, the other thing I was going to talk about is, so I bought this, it's the NCE Fuse Bus, and I was going to wire this thing in with all the uh, different districts, and these say it can use a 16 gauge uh, wire in here, but it won't fit a 16 gauge wire, and that's what I'm using. So it, I kind of bought this thing, and it wasn't that much, but um, really can't use it. So I may try and figure something out, but right now I wired it without it. Um, and maybe in the future I'll go ahead and do it, but eh, it kind of pissed me off. But anyways, um, so yeah, making some progress. So once, uh, once I get the lower deck down here all wired and done, um, all I'm going to start, and then once I can get some track for the SN3, then I'll start laying that. Once I get that done, then I'll, uh, I'm going to bring it all around. That way I can set the track height and make sure everything else is, uh, is good before I start and continue building. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching.